First question is from Ogdoku. What are your thoughts on doing on, only the big four with no other accessories? Have, have any of you guys actually just did that for a long period of time? I did it for... A I really, mean, Maps Powerlift is the closest thing to that. Yeah, right? and I, I did it for a relatively short... So here's the deal. There's good and then there's optimal. <clears throat> is this good enough to give you strength and general muscle and, it, you know, yeah. Is it optimal? No, because with the big four, your squat, your deadlift, your, you know, your bench press. press, overhead press. So it would be those, right? Yeah, and you're not rotating. You're not moving laterally. You're basically in one plane you know, with all those exercises. You're building your foundational base yeah. for strength, basically. Yeah. But you're not getting... You get a long ways, though, with that. You, you, you can. get a long That's way right. far, you, you especially if we are talking about the the average client or Correct. someone who's extremely deconditioned. If you are not consistently training, and then all you did was the the, the four big lifts for a year, you would see tremendous results. Yeah, I think you'd tremendous be. Okay. I think you're okay if this is how you work out, and you're not a fitness fanatic, and you're not thinking about optimal results. Mm. You're fine. You're going to be okay doing this. It's better than any other four. Well, it's like the carnivore diet for training, right? So it's, <laughs> I'm just saying that's man, a bad example. You got your meat. You can live off of that, and it you know it'll sustain you, give you the nutrients. No, that's a bad example. No, that's come it's on, not like the carnivore. No, no, it's way better. It's way better than that. This if you is, were on that the whole time, you're inevitably you're going to hit a wall where like your joints are going to talk to you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but look at it more just like just like you know, like if you're not including fiber in your diet, and you're not getting the other values yeah. from all the other. Th uh, anyways, it's somewhat of a. It'd good be like analysis. only so, eating four foods. Yeah, oh, yeah, but maybe okay, not perfect. I'm, I'm going to challenge that a little bit. Here's the thing. So uh, if you're very inconsistent with your training. Training, okay, you let's say in a and I don't even know what the what the studies show around this, like with the average person who does, quote unquote, work out consistently, what, how many days out of a year they actually work out. But let's pretend you're the type of person that falls in the category of only meeting 50 percent of that. So you have mm -hmm. a lot of off and ons. You do it really good for three weeks or so. Then you fall off for two weeks. Then mm -hmm. you get a streak for a month Then you fall off for a month. And then you go, you know, what I'm saying, sure. which is probably the ebb and flow of the average person, right? Wouldn't, right. Would you not agree? Yep. If that person only when they lifted in those days, they actually, the only thing they did different was they only focused on the four lifts. I would make the case that they would get the greatest bang for their buck. Now, you mean in comparison to doing in comparison, a bunch of other stuff? Yes. And compared to doing a bunch of other stuff, if you're just as inconsistent. Now, that's not saying that you're not missing out on important things like rotation and lateral movements and things mm -hmm. like that. That's a given. But if those four exercises give you the greatest return on your investment, and if you were inconsistent, but when you did work out, those were the only things you did, you would get the most return from that. Yeah, I, well, I, I love the simplicity of it. And mm -hmm. I think that we go away from that all the time and we come back to it uh, for that reason, because they're so effective. Uh, but yeah, so if I'm going to compare that to somebody that always mixes up with a gajillion different kind of cool exercises, like you're going to have way more value from yep. these things four simple, impactful exercises every day of the week. It's just, you know, you got to put a little more thought into like the longevity of that. Yeah, yeah. All those four exercises require lots of strength, lots of stability, a decent amount of mobility. Here's what I like that for people who do other sports. Like I was just talking to my, uh, my brother-in-law and he was talking about how he's doing jujitsu three days a week and he's been trying to lift three or four days a week. And he's like, my body always hurts. I don't know. What's, I'm like, dude, you're doing way too much. I said, you just got back into jujitsu. Just do one day a week of lifting and just do literally those four exercises. Yeah. Now, why is that okay for him? Because in jujitsu, he's doing all kinds of dynamic movements. He's moving all over the place. All he wants to do is add some strength. In that particular scenario, okay. that's a good option. It's also a good option for, I mean, let's be honest. The average person, forget the fitness fanatic, right? The average person, the most we could hope for in terms of long-term consistency, if we do a bang-up job and we do a really good job, is about two days a week of consistent work. And that's why I say this. In that case, I think it's perfectly fine that's, too. Because here's, there's been times when uh, I've been so inconsistent with my training that I take those four lifts and I divide it even over three or four days. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just going in and I, that's all I do. I do yeah. five, six sets of overhead press for the day and I and I actually can leave the gym. And this is different. This is me older and wiser. Younger me would never do that. I wouldn't count that as a workout. But I know how in, how powerful and impactful those movements and how much benefits that you get from it that I may just do that on day. So I might be inconsistent. I'm not doing a full workout. I'm not getting the best bang for my buck as far as all the other movements I should be doing. But the bare minimum this week, I did all those four movements, yeah. at least five to eight sets of it. And mm -hmm. doing that alone will 
maintain a decent amount of muscle mass on me, a pretty good balance throughout my whole body. Yes, am I am I losing rotational strength? Yes, could I get you know chronic jo joint pain if I'm always moving in that plane all the time? Absolutely, I'm not saying it's ideal. But when I think of the average person who does not work out consistently, and I if I only could pick four movements, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. You're I fine. tend to. I mean, I've done this before, but mainly with like six to seven exercises to keep it around. You know, that is so like you add like dips in there, you would add like, you know, weighted pull ups, uh, rows, you know, bent over rows. Yep. If I added those, I tend to feel like I'm, I'm a little more I get more of a broad stroke of, you know, everything else I was trying to get. Yep, I agree. Yeah. you But you that concept, though, of just well, a handful is, of like big major movements and just doing those and yep. maybe you throw like Turkish get up where you hit everything really well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Add sure. that to the, that add, your add the fifth. function in there. Yeah. And so, no, I. I I think this is a really good place to start for a lot of people. Is there a lot of things better? Yeah, absolutely. Like, but I just I'm always thinking about the average person who who we who we train. And the reality of it is there's a lot of things they didn't do that would be ideal. And so if I only got them to do these things, you know, would I be winning? Oh, we would be way better oh, off. Yeah, you'd yeah. be way ahead of the game. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.